Chapter 39, The Allies. Dylan, tell our Zoomies what allies are again. Say it really loud so they can hear you. Allies are people that help you, they're friends with you, and everything. And uh, these are our state's allies. France, England. The funny thing is, England used to rule us and give us terrible treatment. Now they're our allies. <laughs> That's right. Okay, I hope you guys were able to hear that. It's pretty pretty good description of what an ally is. Jaya and Jad would do anything to have their own mother back. So they understood how happy Brightville and Roz must have felt in that moment. But they also understood that this happy moment couldn't last forever. Brightville couldn't live on the farm. And Roz couldn't be her true self around their father. Life seemed so unfair. The children knew what needed to happen. Roz, you need to go home, said Jaya. You need to be with your family and your friends on your island, said Jad. I wish I could go home, but your father would never allow it, said Roz. Just run away, said the girl. I ran away once. It was easy. But then I started feeling hungry, so I came home and made myself a sandwich. <laughs> Running away might be easy for you, but not for me, said Roz. Your father can track my movements. If he sees me trying to escape, he will think I am defective and he will send me away to be destroyed. An uncomfortable question popped into Jaya's mind. Roz, don't take this the wrong way, she began. But is it possible that you are defective? Don't say that, Jaya, cried her brother. No, it's okay, said the robot. I have asked myself that same question. I do not feel defective. I feel different. Is being different the same as being defective? I don't think so, said Jaya, or else we're all a little defective. You saved my life, and now I'm going to save yours, said Jad, with a look of determination in his eyes. I know you can only access farming information, Roz, so let us handle the research. There has to be a way for you to, esa to safely escape, but we'll need to figure out a plan. The robot exchanged a few animal words with her son, and then she said to the children, Bright Bill must, be so must soon lead his flock back to their wintering grounds. However, he can return here in the spring. The boy slowly nodded. We should have you ready by then. The girl looked concerned. Roz, even if you safely escape from the farm, how will you get all the way home to your island? Leave that to Brightville and me, said the robot. Together we will find our way home. I have faith in the two of us, and I have faith in the two of you. Chapter 40, The Instincts. Instincts are things that you have deep inside of you telling you what to do. So you don't have to think about it. You just naturally know how to do something. The next few days were a blur. Roz rushed through her daily tasks so that she could have more time with the flock. The geese talked about Chit Chat the squirrel and the beaver family and the other animals on the island. Roz talked about the robot factory and the Sharifs and life on the farm. But the geese were always aware of their instincts, calling them back to the warm wintering grounds. And when they awoke one morning to find the countryside dusted with snow, they knew it was time to go. So they've got something inside of them telling them it's time to go. That's their instinct. By some miracle, Roz and Brightbill had been reunited, and now they had to say goodbye all over again. The flock stood in the pasture with Roz as the children and the herd looked on. Brightbill fluttered up to his mother's shoulder and wrapped his wings around her face. I'll return in the spring, said the goose, and then you and I are going to find our way home. Please be careful, said the robot. I do not want to lose you again. We'll keep your son out of trouble, squawked Loudwing with a smile. The geese waved goodbye to Roz and their new farm friends. Then Brightbill shook his tail feathers, beat his wings, and led his flock into the sky. Chapter 41, The Winter. No, it was somebody else. 
When Roz lived on the island, winter had seemed like one long, cruel blizzard. On Hilltop Farm, winter wasn't quite so harsh. The temperature fell, but then rose. Storms came and then went. Snow piled up and then melted away. Roz spent winter preparing the farm for spring. She wanted everything to be perfect for when she left. She tuned up the machines. She made fertilizer from old grass clippings and manure. What's manure? Yep. Yeah. Droppings. <laughs> she planned which crops would be seeded in which fields. She carefully looked over the herd, making sure each cow was happy and healthy. She made long lists of supplies, and then Mr. Sharif placed big orders. The herding machine hauled bales of hay into the pasture, and the cows gathered around to eat, steam puffing from their mouths. Some of the cows were dried off and wouldn't be milked again until after the calving season. Others went to the milking parlor twice a day as usual. Bottles were filled, boxes were loaded, and the milk truck rolled away on its next delivery run. No matter the season, the dairy farm kept chugging along. Every day after school, Jaya and Jad ran to their bedrooms and got right to their homework. And when their homework was finished, their secret studies began. What, are their, what do you think their secret studies are? Getting Roz out of there. They're making plans. They researched the design and construction and maintenance of Rosam robots, hoping to discover some way for Roz to safely escape. Remember, she's got something inside of her that allows Mr. Sharif to know where she is at all times. It's like a tracking device. That's a big problem to overcome. The information wasn't easy to find, but the children were persistent. They had grit. They had grit, perseverance. They didn't give up. And after weeks of work, they finally found what they were searching for. Chapter 42, The Plan. Jaya pressed a button on the side of the milking parlor, and the door hummed open. She and her brother stepped inside and wound their way past gleaming pipes and tanks and over to where Roz was cleaning some equipment. We found a diagram of your design, said Jaya. We think we can help you escape. The problem is your transmitter, said Jad. That's the device that sends out your electronic signal. If we can remove your transmitter, you'll be able to run away whenever you want without anyone tracking you. Do you know how to remove it? asked Roz. I think so, the boy chuckled nervously, but we won't know for sure until we open you up and take a look. We'll have to do it late at night, said Jaya, when Dad is sleeping. Ah, oh, <laughs> that's cool. Your robot powers, Kayla. We just need... We just need to find a place where we can work in private, said Jad, rubbing his chin. How about the old barn, said Roz. It's quiet and hidden. I can prepare the barn today, and you can operate on me tonight. <gasps> Everyone agreed, and the plan was set. Chapter 43, The Operation. Midnight, and the children were wide awake in their beds. Jaya and Jad were waiting for their father to fall asleep. Once he was snoring deeply, they tiptoed past his bedroom, down the stairs, and out the back door. They crept across the farm to a cluster of trees, and there was the old barn looming above the undergrowth like a mountain. Its door was open a crack, and a wedge of light spilled outside. The children closed the door behind them and walked past wooden railings and stairways and up a ramp to a platform in the back corner of the barn. Lanterns hung from the walls and cast their soft light upon a large table. Standing behind the table was the robot. Hello, children, said Roz. How do you like our operating room? It's a little dark, said Jaya, but it'll work. Jad pulled his computer from his pocket, and he, as he brought up the diagram of Roz's body, his face tightened with worry. We've never done anything like this before. 
Just do your best, said Roz, patting him on the back. That is all I can ask of you. The robot unfastened her tool belt and draped it over a railing. Then she lay flat on the table. It was time to begin. Jaya looked down at Roz. All set? Roz looked up at Jaya. All set. The girl felt under the robot's head, found the button with her fingers, and pressed it. Click. The, Roz's body relaxed. Her quiet whirring slowly stopped. Her eyes faded to black. Jad took a deep breath. Then he grasped the robot's head in his hands and twisted until, flip, it popped off. In the smooth socket where the head had just been was another button. Jaya pressed it and the robot's chest opened up. They peered into the hollow chest cavity and saw a tangle of tubes connected to a grid of boxes. These were the robot's electronic organs. Like her guts. That's the, well, we all have guts. And she's got boxes and wires. That's the transmitter, said Jad, pointing. The children reached into the robot's chest, carefully removed a box and a tube, and set them on the table. That was easy, said Jaya, smiling. Actually, I think this is the transmitter over here, said Jad, and he removed another box. Then Jaya removed another tube. The boy checked his computer and said, I might have this backward. A, he a bead of sweat rolled down his forehead as he removed another box. Wait, I think we should start over. Jaya nudged her brother out of the way and started plugging parts back into the robot's chest. You're doing it wrong. Jad nudged his sister out of the way and started removing parts again. Uh-oh. I don't know about you, reader, but I'm a little confused. So were the children. Pretty soon, Roz's internal parts were strewn across the table, and nobody knew where anything was supposed to go. Oh, no. Why did you remove so many boxes? yelled Jaya. Why did you remove so many tubes? yelled Jad. The siblings argued for a while. Then they sat quietly for a while. Uh-oh. You guys see this? Let me see. Let's no. Roy! Let me see. Oh, oh my god. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh my gosh. That that is my crazy. Crazy. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. What a mess. The children were tired and cranky and afraid that they'd never get Roz working again. Are you listening? Thank you. Jaya slumped against the table and looked at the ceiling. Then her eyes drifted to the lanterns, dimly glowing above, and then she had an idea. She climbed onto a wooden railing, grabbed one of the lanterns from its hook, and climbed back down. When she held the lantern close to Roz's body, Jad noticed that there were different numbers, lightly etched onto each of the internal parts. Now things were starting to make sense. The children quickly removed the correct box and tube, they put the robot back together, and then they turned her on. Click. Roz's body tensed. Her quiet whirring slowly started. Her eyes began to glow, but she didn't say a word. Are you okay? said Jad. Roz pointed to her mouth. Can you speak? said Jaya. Roz shook her head. She can't speak! cried the boy. We must have put something back in the wrong place! Click. The children opened up Roz's body, rearranged some of her internal parts, and put her back together again. Click. Roz powered up and said, Children, I can now speak, but I cannot move. Click. After hours of trial and error, and with morning light seeping into the barn, the operation was a success. Roz stood up, scanned her internal parts, and said, Children, you did it. You removed my transmitter. Thank you so much for your help. You're very welcome, said Jaya, yawning. Jad checked his computer. I can still see your signal on the map, he said. Your transmitter is still working, so keep it close until you leave the farm. And then he stuffed the little electronic device into the robot's tool belt. It's a good thing they gave her that tool belt, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Children, there's a bit of bad news, said Roz in a serious tone. I know you have been up all night long, but I'm afraid it is time for you both to get ready for school. That's going to be a tough day. Okay, and the next chapter we'll read is called The Patient Robot. And we're going to stop there for now.